What's up everyone? In this video, you're gonna learn the triangle of goals, which is the system that we take clients through whenever they start with us to help them identify and get clarity on what their big goal is so that they have laser focus on that so that they can create momentum and ultimately break through to the next level. This is something that was inspired by that I took from Jason Phillips at the Nutritional Coaching Institute. And it is a really helpful framework to understanding whether you have a performance goal, an aesthetic goal, or a longevity goal, and being okay having secondary KPIs with your primary KPI and understanding that you're not going to achieve high levels of success in all three at the same time. Uh, and so if you enjoy that, be sure to subscribe to the channel. This is the E4 Fit Method channel. My name is Paul Klingen. I am the creator of the E4 Fit Method where we wanna teach and train people uh, on how to think about their training, nutrition, recovery, and mindfulness so that you can ultimately level up your health, fitness, and use that to amplify whatever it is that you're doing in life. So check this video out. All right, so now that we've gone through the five myths, the first thing that you wanna do when addressing what it is that you're focusing on is go through what I call the triangle of goals. And to be fair, I got this from Jason Phillips, the founder of NCI Nutrition. Uh, it's a course that I went through for nutrition, but this has been one of the most helpful things in helping myself and clients and our coaches really get clear on what it is that we're working towards, what it is that we're optimizing, what it is that is really driving and motivating you. And I see all the time someone will say, oh, I really want to get stronger and do some push-ups or chin-ups or whatever that is. Maybe they want to be able to run faster, but they actually want an aesthetic goal. Or they say, oh, I really want to lose weight, but what they really want, what they really need is to clean up their blood pressure or there's something deeper driving. So just getting really clear on what the primary KPI is, is going to allow us to then prioritize that goal. And so I'll just use this triangle right here for an example. The closer you get to an aesthetics-based goal, and I'll dive into these goals in a second, the closer you get to performance, the closer you get to longevity, the further you get from the others. So if you are concerned with looking good and having long-term health, maybe that's you right here, you gotta be okay moving away from performance. Maybe this is you here, right? But if you want peak performance, you gotta be okay knowing that your longevity might be sacrificed in the short term having your aesthetics not be exactly what they want. So to give these tangible examples, this might be an offensive lineman. They need to be able to perform. They need to be huge 300 pound people. They don't care if they have abs and they're running into people full speed and smoking their head and smoking their spine and smoking their body and putting it all out on the field. So longevity is not really what they're solving for. Now you got someone from an aesthetic standpoint who wants to be on the cover of a magazine. You want to be super ripped, super lean. Maybe it's a bikini competition, bodybuilding competition. How much you bench, how fast you are, doesn't matter. You're being judged by aesthetics, right? So then from a longevity standpoint, you want to just look good, feel good, reduce stress as much as possible, sleep really well, and just live a long, happy, healthy life. You don't give a damn how fast you are. You don't care as much what you look like as long as your body functions and is really healthy. And now you might be thinking, well, is it possible to get all three? If you're not working out at all, and you just plop yourself right on this triangle, yes, absolutely. You're going to improve a lot of metrics, but it's important to understand what is the primary one because if you keep the main thing the main thing, you're going to get closer to that, but you gotta be okay with performance dipping or you gotta be okay with maybe slightly disrupting some markers in here in the short term as you go and chase this goal. Now, what you can sometimes do and what I'll see a lot with clients is when we start working together, we will identify, okay, cool, we are chasing a performance goal. Client wants to climb Mount Rainier and that is her focus. She's okay with aesthetics being down a little bit. So in this four month time, we're optimizing for performance. She might be losing a little bit of leanness. The training might not be something that's super long-term sustainable, but once we get her to this point that she wants to be at, then we can go and chase this goal. But what's super interesting is that once you get something from a level six to a level eight, it's much easier to manage and maintain that performance that you're at or those aesthetics that you're at or those health markers that you're at and then go and focus on a different goal. So all of this is basically to just help you get clarity on what the primary KPI is and what the secondary KPIs are. And when you have that clear and focus and intention and you put everything else on the back burner temporarily and more just in a maintenance mode, then you're gonna get there so much faster because you're focusing on the one thing. So to dive a little bit deeper into this, let's go and look at each one of these specifically. So for performance, 
That's basically gonna be a goal that is very numerically driven. It's very binary. Did you do it? Did you not? There are numbers involved with how heavy you squatted, how fast the marathon was, how fast you ran, how high you jumped, how far your drive went, maybe you're a golfer. Those are all things that are very measurable, very binary. But when you're training for performance, it's important to remember that you also gotta keep the one thing, the one thing. So if you're trying to improve your squat and get that to let's just say 300 pounds and you wanna run a marathon, those are not gonna work. Those are two completely different goals. So you need to then identify, maybe you identify, okay, I want a performance-based goal. That's what inspires and motivates me. Well, we gotta pick something. The marathon is what you're focusing on right now. You can go and chase the squat goal. You can go and chase the pull-up at a later time because what's also happening during this time is you gotta optimize your nutrition and you gotta optimize your recovery. Anytime someone has a performance-based goal, training is going to take priority then you're going to need to recover, then nutrition. And again, this is not to say that you can just eat Cheetos and not sleep as long as training is good. But when you're training to push your body to its limit, the demands for recovery are going to be higher. It's gonna be more important that you sleep. It's gonna be more important that you manage stress. When we're looking at performance-based metrics, the body needs the fuel and that's typically gonna be in the form of calories. How you're getting those calories has a little bit more leeway because again, you're optimizing for performance. You're not optimizing for aesthetics. You might have an aesthetic space goal after performance and that's when this is gonna get inverted. Training becomes less of a priority than does nutrition. So with that said, let's dive into aesthetic based goals because those can be completely different. All right, so for aesthetics, these are gonna be things that are very visually driven. These are things that are not binary. You can lose fat, but there's no yes or no, you lost exactly that amount of fat. There's no yes, no, that is exactly the amount of tone that you want. Bigger arms, you can yes, measure the inches of your arms, but it's very visually driven. In a way, it's very subjective. You can't objectively say, yes, those are big arms because you walk next to Arnold Schwarzenegger or you walk next to Macaulay Culkin. Those are just two random names that came to mind. Those are gonna be two completely different arms. Some people might think those are big arms, some people might think those are small arms. Those are subjective. You can't be subjective with, did you run a marathon? Yes, no, you either did or you didn't. So when we're looking at that, we want to then make sure that what we are doing is optimizing for this. And you might just think, okay, cool, like work out, eat less. Well, if you're trying to lose fat and you're going into a massive calorie deficit and optimizing for weight loss, building bigger arms it's going to be really hard because you're giving the body less calories than it needs. And so for the body to go and prioritize building muscle when you're in a 500 calorie deficit, it's very unlikely, especially for someone who's been working out for a long period of time. If you're a newbie, you might be able to see newbie gains, but that's different. If you're trying to tone your stomach, but then at the same time, you're trying to put on a little bit of size and build your butt, those gonna be competing goals. So we really wanna understand, if, with aesthetics especially, nutrition is going to be the number one thing that you need to focus on. From there, it's also gonna be recovery, managing stress, especially when you're in a calorie deficit, calorie surplus, those are things that are stressful on the metabolism. Then you get into training. Now, before you go and say, oh, so training doesn't matter? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. Training's very important when you're trying to build muscle. Training's very important in maintaining muscle but nutrition is going to drive these more than anything else. You cannot create a body if you don't have the right inputs. From there, you wanna make sure that you're recovering and that you're not stressing your body out to a point to where it negatively adapts and you can no longer sustain what you're trying to do in terms of these goals. And then from there, you wanna optimize your training for building muscle, maintaining muscle. But again, building muscle, maintaining muscle, those are all aesthetic based goals. This has nothing to do with how strong you are. Are they correlated? Yes, absolutely. Will you run faster if you have more muscle? Yes, absolutely. But the thing that we're measuring, the thing that we're focusing on, the thing that we're optimizing for, it's gonna be a little bit different. Now let's go and look at longevity. All right, so now we're looking at longevity and these are all going to be things that have to do with having a long, happy, stress, reduced life. You're never gonna have stress and stress is good. I'm gonna say stress-free. Definitely gonna have stress. But in this, you're looking at things that you wanna clean up to make sure that you can live a long, happy, healthy life. If sleep is an issue, then sleep is what you're optimizing for. High blood pressure, mobility. If you don't have good form or you don't have good mobility, eventually your body's gonna break down, then you get injured. That's not very uh, long-term health thinking if you're always getting injured because you have a lack of mobility. It could just be managing for stress. 
could be mental health. And sometimes that's all people care about. They just work out for their mental health. And that's awesome. If that's what you're focusing on, let's continue to do that. Let's continue to optimize so that you feel really good. And when we're looking at these markers, there's all things that we can measure within this, but at the same time, we're okay if performance isn't off the charts. We're okay if you don't look and feel like a supermodel, or if you look and feel like Thor, or even just anything beyond just feeling good in your body. And that's totally cool. And you should totally love that that is your goal and own that. Because if your goal is to maintain mental health, maintain good sleep, maintain good hormones, maintain blood pressure, that really is optimal health. Because that's something you can go and sustain for a long period of time. The body's always breaking down. The body's always going to be weaker than its strongest point. It's always going to be a little bit chubbier than the leanest you've ever been. But if you can just optimize and solve for, cool, I just wanna live a long, happy, healthy life and do that to the best of my ability, that's a great goal, right? And so I just wanted to preface that because sometimes people think, oh, longevity is not as sexy as the aesthetics. And don't get me wrong, aesthetics are great too. That's what you want, own that and honor your desire. Same thing with performance. Anyway, let's get into really the hierarchy here. We're looking at recovery, making sure that your nervous system, your metabolism, your overall stress, your allostatic load for those science people out there, making sure that that's managed. Then from there, we wanna look at nutrition. Then from there, we wanna look at training. And really the thing about longevity that I love too, is this is where you can really say, okay, my longevity goals are more important to me. I'm gonna go and focus on a different part of my life, a different season. Maybe you have a longevity based goal and you're working with us because you are focused on your career, or maybe you just had a kid and so you're like, hey, I'm just working out for longevity so I can play with my kids more. Maybe you focus on longevity, you're just maintaining with nutrition, you're just maintaining strength so that you can go travel and go have fun. That's awesome. But keeping this as the goal and then being able to say, okay, cool, now I wanna go chase a performance goal or eh, I kinda wanna focus on aesthetics more and build in a certain area or cut and reduce in a certain area, that's great but you just gotta understand order of operations. You gotta understand what the big thing is, what the one thing is, optimize for that. And you're gonna be so much more successful because you're reducing these drags and almost think of it as a boat. You got your anchors and you got propellers. When we are super focused, you've got all the propellers behind the boat and you're dropping those anchors. When you're trying to optimize for sleep and optimize for running and optimize for fat loss and optimize for 50 different things, those end up just weighing you down. So at the end of the day, just, identify where you're at on that triangle and then solve for that. That makes it much easier on you. Now let's dive into identity setting. This is where we put in place really what identity and beliefs you need to have so that the process of these becomes really second nature, automatic habits, and you can really live into that long-term vision, that long-term goal that you have for yourself.